When I, when I met Tom Morello on the flight and learned one of the most valuable lessons I ever learned from him. Um, Tom Morello from Rage Against Tom the Machine. Tom Morello is the guitarist from Rage Against the Machine who was my greatest influence as a guitar player. So <coughs> he's waiting at the... He's, he's waiting to get on the plane and I'm thinking that's not Tom Morello. And then uh, as we're walking on the plane, I walk past and I've got the seat at the far, the furthest seat away from first <laughs> class, the last seat on the plane. That's what Oprah bought you. Yeah. But yeah. <laughs> well, you know, whatever. She gives everyone else cars. I got the last seat. So um, I walk past and I'm looking and there's Tom Morello in first class. I'm like, and I freaked out and I just I'm frozen and I'm, so I'm thinking, I, and all I can think is, and I'm, I'm like, fuck Oprah. I got to talk to that guy. <laughs> like, how do I get? A conversation with him how do I talk and I just was in the back seat of the plane for five hours from LA to Chicago sweating how do I talk to this guy what am I because I'm like I've got to take advantage you don't of want to look like a total fan no but I just it was one of those things where like there's probably three people in my whole career where I'm like I have to like I'm just gonna do whatever it takes to meet them if I get the opportunity grab it by the, the horns and so I literally just picked up my phone I walked through into front class and just where his seat was and I'm, I'm just on autopilot and I look down and his seat's empty and I'm like what the? What you and I don't think oh he must have gone to the bathroom and at that exact moment I turn and he's coming back from the bathroom and I'm face to face with Tom Morello and I'm like and I know I've got 10 seconds before someone comes kicks me out of first class and I was like hey man I'm in a band and I really love your band and I started my band because of your band and can I get a picture and he was like really humble and like oh that's cool man yeah um uh, maybe not now on the picture. Why don't we do it after the plane lands? And I was like, oh yeah, of course, because we're in midair and it's first class. I'm not supposed to be here. So of course, <laughs> makes sense. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, when the plane lands, I'll see you when the plane lands. I'll see you then. Okay, cool. <laughs> and I go back with my tail between my legs. And as I'm walking back, I'm just killing myself. Like number one, you blew it. Number two, I'm at the back. I'm, I'm never going to, I'm not going to see him when the plane lands. He's going to be gone. off. Yeah. Well, and I'm thinking, oh, he blew me off. Okay. You know, at least I tried. I could at least sit there. But then, of course, at the plane lands, I grab my bag and I'm trying to hustle down the front and be like, but I literally was the last fucking person off the plane. I was the last person off the plane and I walk off and there's Tom Morello waiting for me, still at the gate, waiting for me like, and he points at me like, hey, there you are. And I was like, oh, you waited. And he was like, yeah, come on, let's do it real quick. I got to get my bag. And I was like, cool. So I'm there and we take the pick and he was really, he gave me like, you know, 30 seconds of his time and he was like, great to meet you. Got to go. Cool. And I'll never forget it because... I, I always remember the experience I had just, you know, for the rest of my life would be perfect respect for the man because he took the time. He did what he said he was going to do. He didn't blow me off. He has no reason to do it. And he just respected the fact that I was a fan and that I had obviously gone a little bit above and beyond breaking into the first class to get his picture. And he actually, like, I wouldn't have done that. I would not have done that. I would have been like, I'm going to get my bag and I'm out. But like, you have met him since. Yeah. A few more times, haven't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah. That was the dopest thing. Because... <laughs> The other part was years later, the band's blown up and we've had the number one, a couple of number ones and people know our music now. And Tom Morello's got his side project, Street Sweeper Social Club. And they're playing two festivals with us back to back, one one day and the next festival the next day. And I, and I was like, I can't wait to see Tom Morello live. I've never seen him before. And it's this side project with a, a rapper and a, a different band good project and it and it was lower on the bill because it wasn't raised against the machine so he was really quite close to us mm. the second day he was literally the band after us so i was like i wonder if i could get him to come a little early and watch my set that would be the shit so i'm in the i'm in the the uh interview bus where the radio station that's put on the two shows is doing the interview they're talking to me about the band and then they say oh we know that you love tom morello you know we're we're interviewing him later today and i said you got to ask him this one question read all the interviews, did, never got the answer to how he invented the, the kill switch pickup thing, that, yeah. that thing that was his trademark. I don't know if he invented it, but he popularized it. How, where, I, wanted, I always wanted to know what was the first time that he did it and what did he think and what was the circumstances. And the guy says, why don't you come and ask him yourself? And I was like, yes, that sounds <laughs> like something I want to do. We finished the interview and he was like, you know what? You're really good at interviews, you're well-spoken. Why don't you just do the whole interview? It'll be great radio, rock star to rock star. 20 minutes, half an hour on the couch with Tom Morello. I was freaking <laughs> out. I'm like, you want me to interview Tom Morello for half an hour? And he was like, yeah. I was like, yeah, I'll totally do that. So I go back to the bus and I spent five hours researching everything <laughs> he's ever done in his life so I can do the best possible interview 
because I don't just want to ask about rage, I want to ask about guitars and music and theory and production and everything. Pick his brain. Pick his brain. <laughs> Mostly, make a good, I'm telling you, totally self-serving. Make a good impression, so I say to him, come and watch my set tomorrow, I'm awesome, you should see what I do. <laughs> like, we've just done this interview, we have a rapport, now come watch my band. So I did exactly that. I interviewed him, and at the end of the interview I said, I've got to put you on the spot. I really would love it if you came to see my band. We're playing right before you. Do you think you could come an hour early tomorrow and check out my set? And he said, yeah, I'd love to. So the next day we're on stage. I'm, you know, I'm, we start the show, he's not there. I'm looking around, he's nowhere. First song, second song, third song, he's not there. I'm like, all right, you know, okay, he's not gonna come. Didn't remember that uh, I had that experience on the plane at the time. I, of course I remembered it, but I didn't think, oh no, he's a guy that does what he says he's gonna do. Yeah. I just kept thinking, well, you know, everyone else, I would have, I, I probably might have come for the last song. I would have been like, I gotta go check him out because I said I would, but I wouldn't have like, it, it's a lot of effort in, the, in this line of work to say I'm gonna restructure my schedule on 24 hours notice to do you a favor that I don't need and to do. And they should be prepping for this, that they're coming exactly. up. Exactly, yeah. it's, it's not his business to come and check out my set. The only reason you do that is if you really like the band, you've heard the stuff and you wanna see the set and you, you take advantage of the fact that you got a backstage pass and you go and check them out. But you don't, if some kid comes to me and says, I love you man, I wanna check out your set, I would do it now because of that experience. Back then I would have been like, look, I'm busy. I'll, I'll, I'll but, check out so, your set. So you're on stage, you can't see him. And I stop, I stop uh, looking around and I focus on the set. And the, after that moment, we had a great set. I was really nervous for the first three songs. After I'm like, I'm giving up on Tom Morello, he's not coming. And I killed, great set, great show. Last song, I turn around and he's there wearing, in my guitar stack, like where my guitars are at. He's in my guitar rig area with a hoodie on and the glasses and he's watching my set. And I'm like, oh shit. And I made like 20 <laughs> mistakes in a minute. And, and I was like, oh. I went over to my guitar tech at the end of the set and I was like, that was, you know, that was Tom Morello. He was like, yeah, he was there for the whole set. And I was like, he came like around fourth song. So the moment that I stopped paying attention, he had shown up, watched the set. And I was like, wow, that's really great. That's really cool. We go and do some interviews and I'm on my way back to the bus. And this is a little tidbit about buses, especially old ones. The doors are really hard to close. You have to literally grab it and pull your whole body weight into it. And it goes, because they're really industrial strength doors. So I'm getting on the bus, and of course I'm looking around for Tom. I want him to tell me I did an amazing show and I was the best ever and all that stuff. And I'm looking around and he's not there. So basically I, I catch him for one second between a couple of trailers and I'm like, oh, that's Tom. And he catches my eye right as I'm pulling the door shut and all I hear is, hey man, that was a great shut. <laughs> and I went, yeah, I just fucking slammed the door on Tom Morello. <laughs> And he was saying I did a good job. I just was, I literally yelled at the band. I'm like, fuck! Because the moment I open it, he's gone. Like it was between the two trailers. So uh, I, after that, I'm up on stage and I've got the, t the wedges between him. I'm literally as far away from you as I am to him and his pedal board and I'm studying every move he's making. And in between the songs, he went back to his amp to get a shot of scotch. And he comes back and he, before he started the next song, he walked over and he was like, that was a great set. That was really fun. And then he goes back to his gig. And I just, in the middle of his in set. In the middle of his set, <laughs> I just melted. I was like, oh, <laughs> fuck.